Here's what an imine is. An imine, if you look at a carbon that was part of a carbonyl that you start out with, if you were to just keep that double bond, throw on a nitrogen, and then some either, you know, alkyl group or a hydrogen, that's what an imine is. You're basically replacing your oxygen right here with a nitrogen and some group attached. Okay, so let's do the mechanism, right? As you can probably guess, and as you'll probably see, these mechanisms have extreme similarities. Instead of trying to memorize them, I'm sure you're going to eventually pick up on the fact that conceptually they're very similar. Again, the very first thing we're going to do, we need to activate our carbonyl, right? Because we have a nucleophile that isn't necessarily the greatest. So what we're going to do is we're going to protonate our carbonyl oxygen, dump these electrons off on the oxygen from hydronium. I forgot that plus charge right there. Okay, now that we've protonated our carbonyl oxygen, right, that activates this carbonyl carbon, we're ready for some nucleophilic attack, right? So let's enter in our amine. I just happen to pick ethylamine, right, because we have two carbons attached to that nitrogen. So let's see what ethylamine can do for us. He has one lone pair. Let's swing these guys on over, attack the carbonyl carbon, and we'll swing electrons from the double bond up onto the oxygen. Okay, I'm going to draw my OH to the left. I'm going to draw the nitrogen piece I just added to the right. So we have the nitrogen, he's attached to two hydrogens, and his two carbon alkyl piece, he now has a plus charge. So remember what we discussed in the last video and the video before that. If we want things to stick around, we deprotonate them. If we want things to leave, we protonate them to make them a good leaving group. So let's do it, right? We don't see any oxygens in our product at all. Let's protonate him and let's deprotonate nitrogen. So if I draw my ratchet version of hydronium for space, I'll protonate the OH to water, dump those electrons off over there, and we want to deprotonate him, right? So let's grab some water. I will snatch up one of these protons, and then I'll dump off these electrons onto nitrogen, right? Remember, this is that plus H plus minus H plus step, aka a proton shuffle. If you want to throw a little jig, be my guest. All right, so let's see what that electron flow looks like. We now have H2O up there. Oxygen has a positive formal charge. And right now we have this deprotonated nitrogen piece. And he has a lone pair. Okay, so what's our next step, right? He wants to leave. Let's give him a reason to. So if we swing these electrons down, we uh, form a double bond, we can kick off that water, and remember, this is that really good minus H2O step, which is good entropically, right? It's good for entropy. Okay, so how does, what does that do for us? Now, we have this hydrogen over there. Nitrogen has a plus formal charge, right? But nitrogen's electronegative. He doesn't like having a positive formal charge. Well, we did just kick off this H2O, so let's clean them up. Let's get the water in there. He'll snatch up that H+. Electrons will swing over onto nitrogen. And two good things. We've made our product, right? You can see that we've got that down, that guy down there. And we've reformed that acid that helped catalyze this reaction in the first place. Right? So really not a big deal. Okay, this is a note on the mechanism worksheet but I want to make it painstakingly clear. With imines, you either need to use NH3, you need to use ammonia, or you need to use a primary amine. And by primary amine, I just mean, <laughs> that sounded weird, that you have to have one bond to carbon, right? You see how we have this ethylamine, or maybe methylamine, or isopropyl amine, you can't have diethylamine, you, can't, you can only have one bond to carbon. Because if you have more than one, it turns into a different functional group, which we'll see in the next video. But before we get there, I want to do the reverse mechanism of this reaction. Sorry, I know I, this is probably getting old by now, but stick with me, alright? Okay gang, just like we did with the acetal mechanism, let's take this imine mecha mechanism and see if we can make it work in reverse. Alright. So just like in the acetal mechanism and in the imine mechanism 
we just drew in the forward direction, remember, we drove water off for that added entropic, that added entropy effect, right? Well, to, re to reverse this bad boy, we need to add water back in, and you'll see how this works. Okay, so let's redraw the imine we have and we produced in the forward mechanism. So remember, we have no nitrogen at all in this carbonyl precursor product. So you can imagine we need to get rid of him, aka we need to protonate him. So let's make that our first step. Let me draw some hydronium, which we will no doubt reproduce in the end because it's catalytic. Let's protonate that nitrogen. Ground the H, draw the result of that. Right, we still have a double bond, the ethyl piece, and now we have a hydrogen and a plus charge on the nitrogen. Okay, so kind of like a carbonyl-esque type thing, he is now activated. Let's attack with water. Swing these electrons over there, attack the carbonyl carbon, swing the electrons up on nitrogen. Draw the result of that. Okay, so I'm going to draw the OH2, the water we just added over here, and I'm going to draw that big nasty nitrogen piece to the left, right, because we have an ethyl group attached and a hydrogen, and that electron pair. Okay, so remember, here's the point where we need to play the game, the little proton shuffle. We need to protonate the nitrogen, because that'll make him a better leaving group, we can then kick him off, and then we need to deprotonate the oxygen because we want to keep him around. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, again, draw my very ratchet hydronium. Right? Uh, nitrogen will come in, take that proton. Electrons swing back on the oxygen. I'll have a different water come in and grab the proton right there and have these electrons swing back on that oxygen. Again, remember, that's that plus H plus minus H plus step. The classic proton shuffle. Okay, so let's see how this electron flow ends up. So to the left, right, we have a nitrogen, the ethyl group, and we have two hydrogens, right? Two hydrogens attached and a plus charge. On the other hand, right, we have just an OH. So remember, what's going to be that motivating force to drive off this nitrogen, this amine? Well, let's swing these electrons down, form a double bond, kick nitrogen off. So that means we now have our protonate, a, a protonated carbonyl so close to the finish line. All we need to do is clean him up. Let's just bring a, a water molecule in. We'll grab the hydrogen, dump the electrons onto the carbonyl oxygen. We can then fist pump in the air because we've reproduced our carbonyl, and we've also recovered that catalytic acid. Again, so the acetal mechanism, the imine mechanism, they only happen in acid, okay? They need that acid catalysis. So you can see that these forward and reverse mechanisms are really not that bad. As long as you practice them, you guys will be able to do them in your sleep, I guarantee it. Okay, so like I mentioned in the first part of this video, you can only form imines with either ammonia or a primary amine. I want to show you guys kind of what happens when you use a secondary amine. And that will yield us an enamine.